I've been playing the Epic Age open beta for about seven or eight days now. I've learned a whole lot and I want to share three important tips that will help you get the most value out of the early stages of seasons in Epic Age. Let's get into it. All right, tip number one is in the beginning of seasons, in my opinion, you just want to focus on one main squad. This is kind of similar to how I feel about Rise to War. These are very similar games. In my opinion, you should focus on one squad as your main squad. In this game, you can assign up to three heroes. Those are the guys that lead your troops into battle. Three heroes per squad. The reason that you want to focus on just one squad early on is in the beginning of the game, skill points are not exactly in abundance and leveling up your skills is amazingly impactful. Uh, every single skill that I've looked at so far actually is at least twice as good at level 10 than it is at level 1. Since you don't have a lot of skill points to go around unless you spend tons and tons of money, you want to focus those skill points onto a few heroes. That way you have one group that is as powerful as possible that will let you start taking higher power tiles as soon as possible. Additionally, usually you're just not going to have the troops to distribute across multiple squads in this game and after the newbie period which is the first 48 hours after that if you pull troops off of your heroes you actually are refunded 80 percent of the resources but the troops themselves are lost so you have to spend all of that time retraining those troops you can't just transfer them straight from one squad to another uh, and you only get 80% of the resources back that you spent on training them. Additionally, once your heroes hit level 20, they can do what's called Awakening. This unlocks their third skill slot. And it requires, well, I guess I can't awaken that guy because he has been awakened. I can click reset on him and show you guys, though. In order to awaken a legendary hero, for example, you have to throw away two legendary heroes. And so if you're trying to awaken, let's say you go with two squads, that would be six total heroes. Let's say they're all legendary. Now you'd have to be throwing away an additional 12 legendary heroes in order to awaken all six of your heroes. If you run one squad of full legendaries, you're only having to throw away half as many, obviously because that's how math works. And some of these legendary heroes, you're actually going to be want to inheriting their skills. That way you can give it to a different hero instead. And if you inherit a hero's skill, you cannot throw them away to awaken another hero because the act of inheriting the skill gets rid of them as well. So your skill slots are also going to be, at least in season one or in this beta, which is effectively season one, uh, you're going to probably want to be sacrificing a lot of the heroes to unlock their skills. In future seasons, that won't be as much of a concern because as far as I understand, once you have learned a skill, the game does not then take it back away from you. All right, tip number two, also similar to Rise to War, is you will have a main quest line. You should do all of these quests as soon as possible. This is because as you complete the quests, you're given resources. Uh, you're actually given some gold too, which you can spend to recruit more heroes. And more importantly, you're given extra territory limit. Extra territories means you get more resources because the tiles in this game, just like in Rise to War, are what produce resources. So the more tiles you're able to take, the better of an economy you're able to have, which means you can keep up with teching up the tech tree and conscripting troops so that you can keep progressing in the game. And tip number three, maybe I'm completely blind. It took me at least a day or two to find this. Um, but there's actually a very useful scout feature in this game. I already scouted this tile, so I'll show you how it works on this one. You scout the tile, you tell the game, let me know the information here. It lets you know which commanders are on that tile, which skills they have, how many troops they have, and let's say you're not sure if you can win a fight, but you have scouted the tile as I've scouted this one. You can tell the game, hey, let me try to occupy that tile. There's also a battle estimate feature in the game. You can see that the game currently thinks I have a 0% chance of taking this tile. That's probably true because this tile has two armies with 21,000 troops each. 
and I have a bit under 18,000 total in my main army. However, there's also a super handy little information here, like little information button, I should say, that tells you, well, currently you have 17,400 troops. You should probably have at least 18,000. You're using cavalry, and the enemy is using, uh, well, it doesn't say they're using spearmen, but uh, you can see this little icon here. I don't know how well you guys can see it. There's a little icon there that shows that they're using spearmen, which counter cavalry. So I think this little bug, it should say the current squadron has been restrained by the enemy spearmen since spearmen counter cavalry. I should change that. I don't want to run my cavalry into pointy sticks. Turns out that's bad. And it also gives you a recommended hero level as well as skill levels. So this isn't a perfect science. The game isn't going to effectively play itself for you. And depending on your level of investment and how willed out your commanders are, like you could probably get away with taking these tiles a bit earlier than other players. Or if you don't spend anything at all, you might have to wait a little bit longer. But it gives you a nice little guideline of kind of the goals you want to hit before you attempt to hit one of these tiles. And the scouting is super important because of the way troops interact in this game. You can see that my cavalry would have gotten wrecked by those spears. Well, I can actually go in here and change over to infantry because my heroes happen to be relatively good with infantry as well as cavalry. And so if we go back and say, hey, I want to occupy that, do our my battle estimate, um, now it just says it's a stalemate, which means neither side has a troop type advantage. Long story short, you really want to take advantage of scouting and then swamping your army to the type of troop that counters the troop that's defending that tile. That way, most of the time you can be fighting, or pretty much all the time actually, you can be fighting an advantageous fight in terms of the troop type matchups. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. Thanks for watching.